to penthouse. Yeah. Let me let me get in here. Let me yeah. get in here. You gotta get in. You gotta get in here. I gotta, I gotta get in where you, you fit know, in. When, hey, before I say anything. D, what it's looking nice in here. What what has changed? Something something something's some, different. Something some, something something something's is way different. different. Something, I can't something. I can't put my finger on it. I don't know. Maybe you what? can put your arm on it. Oh, that's what that's what it is. We you got your other arm. And, uh, oh, maybe you can sit on it. Oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, God. whoa, there. oh my God, what's going on here? Whoa. What, what are we where are we at with it? Man, um, we got a brand new couch. Uh, brand new couch. This is a podcast couch, but this. This ain't the old podcast couch. This is a new podcast couch. Nah, man. Where is the... Oh, I don't know, man. Through, What'd you do with that? Just through trials and tribulations, it has left us. It yeah. has left us. We upgraded, though. Yeah, we upgraded. This is a more... Uh, this is a, the, I, you know, here's the funny thing. I got this same couch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you this sure exact do. same couch. I already know this is a good couch. Yeah. 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 So I'm just happy that um we own a couch because I was watching... I saw a post. If I could find this post, this girl posted this shit. It was so funny. It was like... Girls with no furniture quick to throw you out your house, out their house. You say, girl, nobody give a fuck about this dance studio. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this was. Cause I, did, I was, you was in a dance studio for like two months. Yeah. I was in a dance studio for two months. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I know it don't matter for real, but part of you, people come to your house. They kind of looking at you like, oh, yeah, you in this, huh? But you can't get that furniture, huh? Yeah, but you can't get that furniniture, huh? <laughs> nah, no, 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 we, we wait. That's good. Nah, good. That's good, bro. And it's then good. dealing with the people that we got, that we dealing with with the furniture, they were just so trashed. Oh, man. Process, I, I can't order from them again. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I don't even, yeah, I'm not even, I don't want to put out that energy. Yeah. Um, but if you, if you, here's what I'm going to do. If you message me personally or D personally, I'll tell you <laughs> who, who not who, to get who, who furniture with. I've never ordered from them again. They got good furniture. <laughs> this the shit good, but it's gonna take you seven years and then they gonna I call- say I think it was because of COVID. Nah, nah. See, yeah. I that was cool. Cause of COVID. But yeah, but see. But some of the shit like they'll call you like, hey, yeah, we got your shit coming today. You like, bet, you okay. know. Like, I, I, I got, got my, my schedule, schedule and shit yeah. like that. Then they come and be like, yeah, we don't got none of that shit we said we had. <laughs> we just came to tell you that. <laughs> like, <laughs> we got uh, one dresser for you. Yeah, bro, what I'm going to do with oh, the we dresser? Got, we got half like, your bro bed. Like, bro, call me, tell me, yeah, my side with your furniture. I'm extremely excited. I go outside. Okay, all I got is the headboard, <laughs> your dresser, and yeah, everything else going <laughs> to come. Let me tell you, they like brought me. They I'm brought like, me. What I'm going to do with the headboard, me, bro? They brought me two drawers that go under my bed. I said, these drawers don't even make sense without the rest of the bed. <laughs> like, what am I just, am I just hoarding shit in <laughs> like, here right yeah. now? Like, and we got the, uh, we got the, we don't have a mattress, but we got the, 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 like, box spring type thing that goes under. It's like, bro, in the head, bro. I'm like, bro, I, I can't sleep on that. Then, deliver me my shit, and I don't even have a box spring to go with the bed. This, we're going to do another episode on customer service. This goes <laughs> to show you communication, customer service is one of the cornerstones. That we did in our business, that I feel like got us to where we at today. Yes, man. That's what it all you all people really want is for you to tell them what it, what was legitimately going on. If it's yeah. not going to be here until two months from now, don't tell you me that's going to be here is. next week and then partially you, you, deliver you, you, you me. Bad, you bad as you bad as that boyfriend who don't talk about he don't understand why his girl tripping. Yeah, what you said on your Snapchat a long time ago. I can't remember, you man. Like, my if if you. If you order, if you gave a girl food on Monday, yeah, then you brought her food on Tuesday, mm-hmm. and then on Wednesday, you was like, you did extreme and so funny. You was like, what the fuck you expect on Thursday? Like she tripping? Yeah, like she you tripping. tripping. You just brought her food three days in a row. Of course she gonna call you Thursday. Like where in the hell is the food? Is at? my fucking food? You set a bad precedent. You know you can't do nothing three days in a row without yeah, yeah. And, and, and fill in the blanks. Yeah, yeah. If three days in a row of that. That's your girlfriend. <laughs> that's your guy, my brother. <laughs> No ear fans and buzz about it. Don't even try to run from it. But yeah, like, I just rather focus on the positive. We got the couch. We got the couch. We back on the podcast and we couch. Back on the podcast. This, this brings me back to the roots. I remember the first episode yeah, when I'm you was here with no yeah. shoes on. I'm, I'm low key, might it's be four K though. It's four K. Oh, it's that, definitely gonna be some zooms. That black magic got me nervous. I'm like, what is this shit? Hi, nigga. What is this shit? Like, ah. <laughs> 
Hey, man. You got a foot fetish. This might be your favorite podcast. Hey, let let him make it. I'm going to make it. Let him make it. Let let me make it. He's trying to bring you some good knowledge. I'm scared to put my feet on here. I actually got got some pretty feet, though. Fuck your couch. Fuck your couch. (laughs) But yeah. (laughs) But yeah, so... uh, been What's a great it? week, huh? Is it, oh yeah, man. Oh, it's, got the um, wop wop coming up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, shit. If you uh, if you want to, you know, hit yeah. us up. Well, it's, by the time this drop, it will have happened. Yeah. So it it just no. I might even throw. Let's, some how about let's just say this: the wop was lit. Oh, c- c- the commercial though. Yeah. Because you know that's another thing we do is we do creative commercials. Yeah. Uh, for for companies now, this thing I'm be honest with you has already generated about in one day. We ain't run a we haven't run a paid ad on it. And this sure. shit has already generated like ten to twelve thousand in less than five hours. Yes. So that's the type of power of the creative ads. I'll show you the shit. I'll even see if I can get the analytics from Will. Yeah. You know, it's no cap. Yeah, absolutely um, no cap. It's generated a lot of money so far. And talking about working with other people, that was what our question was about today. You ready to get into the question? Oh yeah, you let me get, get into to Mama's house mail. Yeah, that's a misfire. But don't worry, the graphics and shit still came up, so it was good. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> let's get into it. This is my man Donovan. Donovan, yeah, my man Donovan, and we actually been our, our viewership has been growing. Oh yeah, so, yeah, That's what I'm excited so, we about. all over. So this is Don, Donovan from Georgia, Georgia, right? out there in the A, what Georgia, up? Georgia. <laughs> now you actually can kind of sing nah. on the sneak. On the sneak, on the note. sneak, or at least you can harmonize. Yeah, we can yeah. harmonize. And, and Josh, Josh asked, talking about anybody can sing. That's a you know when that's somebody how, talented some shit. Mm-hmm. Like, anybody can do. This. Anybody can do this. Like, that's how. That's how. That's how you know you've reached the, a high level. When you think <laughs> when you think anybody can do some shit, you you done got too good. Yeah. Like yeah, don't don't you don't you get on camera and just talk without having a problem? <laughs> like no, motherfucker. I no, can't. I, don't even I like told you. I said I cannot sing. <laughs> There's no cap. If I try to sing right now, people be like, turn this shit off. Please. Anyway, my man Donovan asked an amazing question today. And it was kind of like him observing our circle, the last stuff we've done over the years. He said, mm-hmm. you know, I see your circle and I see, I see like the, you know, I see you and Cowboy got a good working relationship. I see a lot of other people you work with, like um, the world's most hated promoter. I want to ask you, my friends are negative. I don't have a good circle like that. How do you build a circle like that? And what can I start doing? to start building me a team where we can create great content together and build a, a growing network. Mm. So amazing yeah. question by Donovan. That's a good question. This is a really good question. Because a lot of people, a lot of people let me, want let me put the, uh, that. Yeah, you. Thank you, my brother. Yeah, it's got that out of box on there. So if I had threw it, I wouldn't do that to your shit, but if I had threw it, it would have been good. Yeah. If I would have dropped it. You know what I'm out saying? Out of box probably would have. It'll throw up that shit. They yeah. threw that shit from like four stories one time. And it still didn't yeah. And we don't make any money off out of box. Somebody <laughs> like, Oh yeah, they must be. Maybe we should get an affiliate link and put it down there. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Who knows? If it's affiliate link down there, just know. We just can yeah, sure. it transparent so just make, though. Just make sure you get it. You know what I'm saying? Keep the money alive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, yeah, a lot of people like to attack that from a, a technical standpoint. Like, I need to go hurry up and find somebody mm-hmm. to you know be on what I'm on. You know what I'm saying? And they focus on finding somebody that's on what they on. Focus on find somebody that's on what they on. And then you like you in this loop because you searching. Yeah. Instead of projecting, yeah. you know, what attractive, I'm saying? attracting. You yeah. don't, you don't find your soulmate. Your soulmate finds you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't find your business partner. Your business partner. I believe your business partner finds you. You don't find. I mean, that's how I shit was. Yeah. I think. I think the starting point with something like this was a great, I'm, a, I'm pretty sure I can find this pretty easy. One of my favorite directors, Issa Rae, she does Insecure, mm-hmm. right? She's actually one of my favorite directors because I remember when she was doing Awkward Black Girl on YouTube. She was banging up YouTube before there was influencers really on YouTube and anything, right? Amazing yeah. show. She said a lot of people are looking for this come up when they network, right? Like, Yeah. It was like, we, try to, we have a tendency to try to like, when we network, network up. And it really is about networking across, like who's next to you, who's struggling, who's in the trenches with you, who's just as hungry as you are. And those are the people that you need to build with. It's it's not about like finding, you know, hitting up, like calling Tyler Perry, like, how can I work with you? Calling Ava to be like, how can I be on? It's about calling your college mate. It's about calling your coworker and saying, hey, you trying to do this? I'm trying to do this project. And 
Literally every project that I've done, every friend of mine has been in in some way, shape or form because I needed them because they were down. They didn't, you know, they're not even part of the industry in many cases just to, to help me make it work. And I would do the same for them in a heartbeat. I'm going to go network with this million dollar person or billion dollar person when the people you need to be networking with is right around you, yeah, right, right at the sir. same level. Mm -hmm. Is that is that me? I think that might have been my laptop. That's you? Let's see here. It's cool. It's, oh, it was. It was. There you go. There you go. It's all good, though. But, um, yeah, but it's like you got to network with the people that's right around you. It's like you got to look at the people at the same level as you because those people are going to have the same drive, same passion, and going to be more willing to work with you, right? You got, I guarantee you got people around you right now that are able to help you propel yourself. Yeah. But you're not focusing on those people because we're just so busy looking at the people that's so high up and feeling like they going to put us on. I got to be around those people to, yeah. to, to win or... You know what I'm saying? I got to be in the mix with with those individuals. It's not like that. Like your inner circle, it could be, it could be, it could be that. But not only just your inner circle, but like I was saying too, it could be very well right in front of you. A lot of people mistake that. Like before you do anything, make sure that you assess the people around you because somebody might be in the circle that could help you. You what, just what too Drake said? to listen. Or did you, you know hear that uh, when he did the uh, beat, the song "Cry" beat? Yeah. Uh, did you did you hear it? What he said? No. He said, "I bet you got someone in your circle that's smarter than your other friends. Give them a percentage and see what happens to your blessings." Then, real shit. So, but a lot of times, what stops you is that pride. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what and, I'm saying? And what I want to do today is I want to take him on a little journey. I wanna, I want you to sit back today and let the sounds of me and DJ flow through your ears. And I want to take you on a little journey. Um, and I guess the best way for us. I'll give my Marco Spoon voice real quick. The best way for us is to um, give you this knowledge, is to take you back on the journey that um, we took in order to build not only a great business partnership, um, but a friendship and work with the people around us to really run um, it up. And if you listen to the smooth sounds of Mama's House to Penthouse, um, you can do the same too. You ready? Let's go. So our story begins... Back, back in the day, back Way in the back. day, back in the day when I first met DJ. So if y'all don't know, we talked about this on the first episode. DJ was sneaking into the parties that me and the world's most hated promoter were throwing. And at the time, I had no intention of working with DJ. I thought that I was done. No new friends. I was on that shit. No new friends. You talked about this before. <laughs> you said, you got to stop listening to some of these lyrics. Yeah, my fuck is gonna do like. It really had you fucked. It up. really had you. Some of them are very inspirational. Yeah, some no, they good. We we quote them all the time, but just yeah. take them. Sometimes take them with a grain of salt because you can go too extreme with that shit. And be yeah, like, I ain't fucking with nobody new. And then exactly. you find yourself missing great partnerships. But to the first point you just made, which I think is the first thing that Donovan should hear is attraction mm -hmm. versus pursuit. So when I first met you, the biggest thing why I tell people all the time, I joke about this. I say, you basically muscled your way into my life. Like, yeah. shit, like, I no friends. But then what happened was I was putting out a message at that time that I felt like resonated with you Yeah. about what I was about. I was like, since then, it ain't changed. It's about creating a future where you're in control, right? Yeah. And I, I was had talking just about read Think and Grow Rich. Exactly. Yeah. So I remember, I remember when, when we was first doing this shit, I was like, you know, um, we start, it was the Crystal Westbrook thing. Yep. The graduation thing. Will did the uh, event with Crystal Westbrook. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time we had worked together where we did the little video. It was the green screen video. It was the first time we had done like content like that. Yeah. We was putting that out. And I remember that was the first time because, no, no, actually it was after that. That was the first time we kind of talked and got together. But it was actually grad season. Yeah. We did Before grad movie. season, we started talking. And it wasn't a situation where you were trying to impress me. I wasn't trying to impress you. What it was, was basically you were just kind of talking about what you thought, what you believe, the type of shit you fuck with. And I was doing the same thing. Yeah. And from there we was like, Hey, this shit just seems like it makes sense for us to have a business partnership. Yeah. So I think the first part with most people, and I've talked about this a lot is most people are in a pursuit mindset. So going back to that quote, what you're doing is you're going out and you're saying, I want to network with this multi-million dollar person. Yeah. So you're pursuing something, but it's not based on your values. And that multi-million dollar person may have a whole different agenda and they may, they may not, not even fuck with yeah, what exactly. you fuck with. Exactly. It may not even be what you own what you own. So then what happens at that point is you begin chasing. 
And when you chase shit, what happens? It doesn't fucking work. It runs it just away. Just repels. Like, exactly. It's just like, come on. It, and think about that too. If you ever get chased by a dog, a dog just stop and chase. The think dog. about a clingy motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Just texting you every like. Just imagine you meet somebody, right? Yeah. Fellas, you meet a girl. You like this is it. This the one, right? Some fellas may not give a fuck what I'm about to say. But mm-hmm. Just bear with me, women, ladies. You meet a dude, you're like, man, this dude's really, he's really the guy, right? He's mm-hmm. got all the qualifications you want, you know? And then they text you, that's fine. Then you don't respond in two minutes, they text you right back. Why you didn't respond? So you don't see my text? That's the quickest way right there. How you feel right now? You're like, damn, yeah, all that like, shit damn. just went out the window yeah, because like, that just... motherfucker was chasing too hard. Yeah. You know what I mean, of course you got to put a little, but they chasing too hard. Yeah. So my thing is, when I look at it from a standpoint when it comes to business, the first thing is, what do you, what are you about? Because I think so many people start with not knowing this. I was talking to a good friend of mine last night, and she was, she was just, you know, debating on like what she could do. And I kept asking her. I said, you know, what do you want? Like, fuck what I think. Fuck what everybody in here thinks. What do you want? And she kept saying, you know, I want to do this for my family. I say, fuck that. Yeah. What do you want? And the thing is, I think once you start with that base, it becomes simple to understand how you can build a group of not just people that fuck with you, but people who are on the same thing that you're on. Yeah, exactly. To push, to, to continue to push stuff forward, though. Yeah. That's how it goes. But that's why you want, you know what I'm saying, to get around people who is on that same energy frequency wave because that's what's going to push everything forward. You get where I'm going? So mm-hmm. like, that's like, of course, but at the same time, too, with like what you just said, I mean... To me, as far as like my man D, right? I'm gonna call him D. I like to give people nicknames. Mm-hmm. Like I, I just keep thinking about the, the what I'm thinking about. Like as you just told the story back from the very beginning, all I can think about is just like in that in those particular moments, like before we even became business partners, before like even uh, all of us started throwing like events together and things. Before all of us even started working together, like we talked about the moments, like because I remember what I was doing. I saw these gentlemen on a uh, line projecting their energy out so they were doing content they were doing high level production they were in front of the camera and i knew i always wanted that i knew i had the personality to do it so you gotta think about what i did i then took matters into my own hands and i went out into this space and just forced my way into it like Mm. i wasn't getting booked they i wasn't even a paid mc at that point like i know that's hard to believe now because a lot of people pay me to come places to talk on the microphone there but like you got to think about it, at the very beginning of this, I just saw some people that I wanted to be around, that I wanted to network with, and I just went in for the kill. I didn't care. I ne- I didn't even have. It was uh, the events that they were throwing was at Beyonce Knowles' dad's house at the Rice Mansion. Okay, I didn't even have clothes like that back then, so I just went because I knew where I wanted to be at. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew what you know. What I'm saying what 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 the networking opportunity. Well, I knew the type of people in that space was going to be, you know, the type of people that yeah, I know I could, sure. I could further the, the, the you know, the, the, the whole vision with. So yeah. that's eventually what ended up happening in that particular situation. But we all were just projecting our energy out and then we aligned with each other. I think that's the, the main thing to, um, to just key on and think about. I think, I think um, you touched on two good points there, right? Yeah. Is first, if you know what you want, you knew, you said right there, you knew what type of shit you wanted to be around. Yeah. That's one. You knew. I did. And then when you were looking for people, you saw people like they're on what I'm what I'm on. Yeah. I want to be around them. Cause the thing is, I think that's the biggest thing like with us. We build such an organic relationship. We become real friends. Exactly. Because it's it's not just like, hey, we can't yeah, we we make money together, right? Yeah. We made a lot of money together. Like a lot. Right. But yeah. the thing is that's secondary almost to the friendship side of it. It's like yeah. the impact we want to create. And I think that's the biggest thing I tell people when, they, when it's like, what do you want? A lot of times we can, we, we say these goals, like I want to get my mother a house, which is noble. Yeah. Cool, I'll get yeah. my mother a house. I want to make sure my family don't struggle, which is noble. Yes. I'll make sure my family don't struggle. But at the same time, higher than all those things, which encompasses all those things is what impact do I want to create in this world? Exactly. And I feel like when you saw us, you like, this is the type of impact I want to create. Yeah. I remember talking to you in the very early stages. And honestly, you never talked about money. Nah. You never were talking about like, I'm trying. Like, you wanted to make money, of course. It wasn't like it was never. It's like, sure, I'm doing everything for free. But it was more like, 
I just feel like we can do something great here, and I want to be a part of that energy. That's, yeah, yeah, that's what it. That's what it always was, and that's another thing too. I think um, it's very important to understand when finding the type of people that you want to be around. Make sure that you're not the type of person that you don't want to be around, and, yeah. and, and that's a very important thing to do. So before. Man, business, relationships, all of that shit, those are like the tier 10 version of a relationship, right? You grow up, you come out as a kid, you have playground friendships. Then you grow up, you have like these middle school friendships. Yeah. Then you grow up and you have like these high school friendships that get a little bit more seriously. You might date in there too, so it got a little bit more seriously. But like when you're talking about marriage and you're talking about business, these are tier 10 relationships. So like you have to be of a specific stature in order to even conduct anything at this level i damn near think it should motherfucking be illegal to do anything if you haven't worked on your damn self first you get yeah. what i'm saying so it's like all these motherfuckers out here trying to date and shit like that like have you dated yourself yet have you yeah. fucked with yourself would you yet? fuck with you like, do, do you do you even fuck with you yeah. like how are you gonna fuck with me if you don't even fuck with yourself yeah you get what i'm saying so it's like first you know what i'm saying make sure that you're not the type of person because what, I, what, what, what made me even bring that shit up, right, is the fact that you said I, I was never worried about the money. So I know I've been here on earth before yeah. because for certain shit, I never really, and I, you, you know, you say some cool shit, like I ain't never worried about that shit. Yeah, yeah. Certain shit, you, I, like, I just never worried about. I think it's because I've conquered it some, like, in the past or something. Because, yeah. like, even everything that we've always done is like, bro, fuck the money. You know what I'm saying? The money gonna come. I like the money always came and it's always gonna come. And at this point, I don't believe it's not gonna just it's gonna stop. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So sure. like fuck the money. And that right there put me in a different space. It put me, it, it was it, I was way younger than you gentlemen, but I was still able to be in the same space as y'all because y'all was on the same shit too. Yeah. It was like, even though Shit, I ain't have a lot of money. I'm pretty sure you didn't have a lot of money back then. Oh, no, not at all. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure my boy uh, Will didn't fuck. He wasn't nah. rolling around in it, nah. right? So I'm like, shit. But we all was at that level mentally, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, So when it, it came down to it, it. It goes back to the point, what you just said. Mentally, you could be at a space. Yeah. And I'll tell you something else. People don't, th this is something, bro, you helped me realize and something like this. And I can be honest on the show about this, right? The, the fact that I was at my mama's house and I was, you know, doing all this business. I was doing some high-level business shop still at my mom's house, right? That's a big insecurity for a lot of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. But what you showed me was like, people don't really give a fuck about that shit if you actually mm -hmm. own the right mental wavelength. Right? Yes. Nobody gives a fuck. He's like, bro, do you deliver the value? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And I feel like a lot of that's just the internal struggles you have to go through. But the biggest thing you just said is working on yourself internally. That's why I say it's all, that's, those are like the number one things when it comes to building this type of thing. Yeah. It's, it's great to talk about all my friends are trash or yeah, that's whatever. easy. But the thing is, are you? Yeah, are you trash? Because you are a reflection because, of the people that's around. Because I can say, when I was younger, the reason I didn't have a lot of quality friendships in my life wasn't because I wasn't smart or intelligent, but I was so I was hell bent on being right all the time, feeling like I was superior to everybody, always had to get my way. Like all these things are things that don't make you a good person to be around. Yeah. It's just like, think about that. It's not, your energy is not good to be around. And sometimes I realize as I've gotten a great book, How to Win Friends Influence, people talks about this. And one of the main tenets of that book is you want to always like to win influence on people, make other people feel important, right? Yeah. And the thing I've noticed like getting better with people is when I talk to them, I just, I'm able to display what value they have. Yeah. Like somebody's talking about they're complaining instead of just being like, like say somebody comes to the business, they like, man, what do we have for this when we run the podcast and this and this? I could take one or two approaches there. Yeah. I could be like, well, the reason we don't have this is because this, and I'm arguing, right? Yeah. I could be like, man, you raising some good questions. I want you to basically write all this stuff down and then let's work on how we can do this shit better. Yeah. The thing is, not only have I acknowledged how important you are, but I've also become the type of energy other people want to be around. What do you think that person's going to do in the future when they when a problem arises in the business? Instead of feeling like I'm, they're going to have to argue with me, they're going to want to bring it to me because they're going to say, Damn, that's some good energy to be around. Hell yeah. That's the same thing as a friend. One thing that you've been amazing at, why I feel like you got so many friendships when I watch Cowboys Ranch, yeah. and it has such feel-good energy to it, is because you just provide a good vibe, yeah. which has brought a lot of business opportunities because I want y'all to be clear about this. This man has brought a lot of business opportunities, not because you've been on your Instagram necessarily all the time talking about what we do, even though you do sometimes. Yeah. But it's just because the good energy. Yeah, it's there. And when you project that, 
people on that frequency come. Like, but they say build it and they will come. If you build it, they will come. If you build it, they will build come. Build the dreams. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what it is. And and to 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 to, to key in on that, like he built the centerverse, which is which which is the thing that you hear him talk about all the time, which is the help people create a future where they are in control. You get what I'm saying? So when I heard him say that, when I told when he he came, those are the words that I always remember. And I just want to help people create a future where they're in control. I just remember that. And soon as he said that, you got to think about it. I didn't know him from a can of paint. He didn't know me. We were just conversating. This is the very beginning of it. He said it, and then boom, bloop. It's like, oh, shit, here we go. Mm-hmm. It's like, here goes somebody that's not in my circle. Here goes somebody that I've been like, I've been talking about. I want to level it up. I want to do this. I want to do that. Like, here goes here go somebody that's talking about it. Finally, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And then another key thing is when you see somebody that's like that, it may not be the type of person that you thought it was going to be. So you got to still be open to that type of person. You may be a person that um, legitimately, like you just don't like specific people from another side of town or something. Or yeah. you may don't like, you just don't like down South people. Cause you had an aunt that was from down South and everybody from down South is rough, but you get this one person that's, they, they, they tell you they from down South and, it's like shit. This is the oh, person. Fuck with down, yeah, so like, come on, do don't that. block your blessings. You know what I'm saying? Get in there. If you're gonna get in, you gotta get in. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, though, right? Like the first thing is the first thing. If I'm talking to D, I'm gonna say, "Hey, look, let's work on yourself first, right? Yeah. Two things you need to have when you work on yourself. One, you need to make sure are you putting out the right energy that can attract those type of people. Mm-hmm. Two, do you know what impact you want to create? Because, like he said, I knew I wanted to help people create a future where they're in control. I knew that. Yeah. You've heard me say it a thousand times. That's what the Massive Action Movement brand says on the bottom of it. When you when we talk about the company vision, it's part of the company vision. Yeah. So I didn't go out and say, what would people, I was just like, this is the impact I want to create. Boom, I'm projecting out to the world. Yeah. So every friend that comes around me or everybody business associate that I work with, they're either going to fall into that or not. If they don't fall into it, they no longer around me, which I'm fine with that. We could be friends. Like you said, we could turn up somewhere else. But I'm saying, from a business perspective or building a good relationship, if you're approaching it from that way, those people are usually going to be on that because they wouldn't fuck with you in the first place exactly. if they wasn't on that. Yeah. So now, not only are you building a good team of people around you, but yeah. you're also building good friendships because that's what they embody in their life. I've seen you all the time wanting to help people, right? Like, yeah. I remember we was walking um, around here and there was a homeless man out there and we gave, I gave him like a juice and you gave him some, I think you have some money or something. Mm-hmm. But then you was like, man, look, where are you going to be at uh, in about an hour? And that's yeah. when you ordered that big ass fucking 28 yeah, yeah, yeah. inch pizza. You was like, I'm going to give you this whole fucking pizza because to be honest, we couldn't do shit with that. Yeah. We that, what, that, what was that? That was the biggest, the big, the biggest piece in Houston. It's bro, 28 inches. It's bro, that shit made me, right here. I was hungry when you called me. He's like, bro, I got this big ass 28 inch pizza. Can't I can't do nothing with it. I'm like, oh, I'm about to. You know, you hungry, you're like, I'm about to know. Go Don't shine on this pizza. Ben's I walked down, and I ate one slice. It was so much pizza, I just stopped being hungry. You just overwhelmed. And I just like, my stomach was like, nah. You can't even. You know, you that used to be like, you, your eyes getting big in your stomach. Not that time. Not that time. I, I assessed way. the pizza and said, I'm done here. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. But oh yeah, my God. I think it's the biggest thing. So the second thing you just talked about there after. So one one thing is, one, understanding what impact you want to create, knowing what you want, and then mm-hmm. projecting good energy from that. So now you can start projecting. Get on Instagram. Go out to people. When you talk to people, right? When I talk to him, he's like, what do you want to do? I didn't say, I want to do digital marketing. Or I didn't say, I want to do some funnels online. I said, I, I want to help websites, people yeah. create a future where they're in control. Yeah. Whatever we can do in between there, I'm down. So if me helping you build a website is going to help you create a future where you're in control. So be it. And this is a lot of shit I talk about in How to Start Business 30 Days about how to create a business where it's, it's more value-based. So you yeah. don't have to be cornered into doing one thing. Exactly. And people will fuck with you no matter what you do. But that's some that's for another time. But yeah. the basic point is, what I'm saying is, that's first. And then putting out the good energy. The second thing you just talked about, right? And I, it's piggybacking on that first point, is now you got to put yourself out there. Exactly. And this is why I think it takes a lot of courage, right? Yeah. It takes a lot of courage to talk about certain shit. Because I'll be honest, coming from the background I come from, I told you, a lot of my family members told me that Reading books, reading books was white folk shit. Yeah. And all that shit was considered lame, corny, whatever that you want to call it, right? Yeah. So to to go around telling this type of community of people like, 
what do you want to do? I want to help people create a future where they're in control. <laughs> you know, motherfuckers is like, bro, you, you, you lame as fuck. Heroic you ass what? down, some little <laughs> boy. The captain save our home. Yeah, exactly. To get your little change in the world one man at a time <laughs> looking at bro. Discombobulated. Motivational speaker looking at it. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. And yeah, that's Look what that's him. the kind of energy I got though. Yeah, nah. You grew up in the hood, you know, yeah, so, you, you laugh yeah. like a motherfucker. Yeah, so what I'm saying, like, that's the energy I got when I first did it. So I take a lot of courage just to deal with that ridicule and be like, fuck it, that's what I'm on. Yeah. But when you go through that shit, slowly it'll be one person who's fucking with it. Right. Yeah, like man, I, 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 I actually yeah, exactly. So I, I give prime example. Decide everything. I wish I could find the text message. Will, world's most hated promoter, was actually the first person I ever uttered the words "massive action" to. Yeah. So I was like, because the massive action movement, all that shit is out now. We got like the action taker show and all that type of shit, right? He's the first person I ever uttered those words to. Remember the text message I said? I said, bro, we can change our circumstances. I, I really text this to this man. I said, we can change everything, bro. We just gotta take massive action. The first person ever said that shit in his meeting, because at the time I was working with him, I was doing it for free at that time. Yeah. People understand. Yeah. I was doing a lot of marketing shit for him for free, which now we, we fucking cashing big invoices off the same shit. Same shit. But in his meeting was the first time I ever said, this shit is a massive action movement. And I said, damn, I'm about to use that. Yeah. And I got the massive action movement, hoodies and shirts and all that type of shit. And it's the brand where we release all our courses and shit under. But what I'm saying is, it came from having the courage to say, I'm going to put this shit out here. And I think that's where a lot of people fall off to me is they don't have the courage to say, okay, I do know what I want. Because you ever notice sometimes, and you and you actually really good at not doing this. Yeah. You ever notice like sometimes people say what they want and then they immediately try to justify it? Say what they want. Like, for example, like, like I, if I say, like, I want to get my arms tatted, but I don't really think I'm Yeah. Gonna... Like if I say, what, what, you, what type of tattoo you want to get? And you're like, man, I want to get a seagull. And I'm like, a seagull? Yeah. Well, the reason I was thinking about getting a seagull is like, yeah. you, why are you justifying what the fuck you want to do? Exactly. And the thing is, I mean, it's a lot of times, it's like people hit me, I was like, just, what do you want to do? What's well, my business about helping people create a future where they in control? And I'll just sit there. Yeah, you see that? That's, yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah. Because what it says right there is like, I don't really give a fuck how you feel about it. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Yeah, that's but the I'm thing on. is, the reason you got to have that type of energy. Yeah. And one thing, I, what you always say, that's, you come to this podcast to get that energy. That's what you come for. The reason you want that type of energy, because that's what's going to attract the type of people you want. Yeah. Because they're going to say, that person knows what they want. In the sea of all these people that I see around all the time, most people are just flimsy as fuck. Yeah. They don't know what the fuck they want. They're all over the place. You tell them, what do you want to do? Well, well I want to do this. And I say, why? They just fall apart. Like, well... It's because, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> what the fuck? This is yeah. what you want to do. I'm just asking you because I'm curious. Yeah. And That's when, true. When, when you can't clearly articulate that shit, you're never going to build that type of circle because what's going to happen is people going to always look at you and be like, oh, okay, behind your back and be like, what about Sunset? Man, that, he don't know what the fuck he want. And that's what I'm saying. They're not going to even say that. They're not going to even say that. A lot yeah. of people don't even understand, right? Mm -hmm. They just going to have this weird feeling about you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why... We all gravitate towards people who really, really, really don't give a fuck. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> like, anybody watching that, that hit hard. Because it's yeah. like, yo, no matter what genre you in, no matter what, like, a type of content that you consume, no matter what it is, you're going to gravitate to the figurehead in that industry that just cares a little bit less than the other ones. Because yeah. you, we all love, authentic, like, just an authentic person. Somebody that's just not scared to do them. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's why a lot of people hate on Cardi B, but they don't understand that it's like either you love her or you hate her. She's extremely polarizing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We talk about that in the influence get that, too. Huh? So, <laughs> I mean, it's just like, for real though, honestly, it's like, yeah. it's, 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 it's just one of them, one of them things. You know? Yeah. And, and that's why I say the big thing is like, 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 like it's not the, I mean, fuck it. I'm plugging. Uh, not in the influence. And one of the big things we was talking about is like, people don't fuck with people who are in the middle. Yeah, no. It ain't no in the middle. You don't give a fuck about the person who... This is what I'm saying. You can name everybody in your life that you loved. Yeah. You can name every motherfucker you hated. But there's so many other people that walk up on you right now, you just like, oh, I kind of remember them. Yeah. It's like, who do you remember the most? People be talking about these toxic relationships, right? Why are there so many toxic relationships? Because a motherfucker has a, such a strong feeling about somebody that they're willing to do un, 
unspeakable thing. Yeah. It's crazy shit. Crazy outlandish shit. Motherfucking got, they talk to one person, they waiting in the closet for that person. They do shit like this yeah. because they feel such a strong emotion. You're not going to do shit like that for people you, oh, they're cool. Yeah, you're not doing I that. I kind of like them. Yeah. Like, the whole thing is you're supposed to polarize people because here's the thing I understand. If somebody, if I talk to you and I say, hey, what do you, what do you, if you say, what do you want to do? I say, hey, I'm, I'm about helping people create a future where they're in control. You say, bro, get your lame ass on, right? Yeah. I, you, I'm glad. Yeah. Because now I know, fuck that person. Let me filter them out, out the situation. Yeah, right? they, they not on them on. Now, if I'm in a room and I say, hey, I'm, I'm, I want to help people create a future where they're in control. Somebody said, what, what, what? What's that you talking about? Yeah. Man, let me talk more about that. What funny thing about you, bro? I don't know if you. What? 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 <laughs> well, I don't know if you want me to say the way you was for the knowledge. You pushed your girl. Oh, he said, like, you you pushed your girl. Tell him. Tell him. He said, tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Okay, I'll tell him. So look, this how you this how this 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 is. I know you don't give a fuck. You right, but you know <laughs> the the thing is, even amongst all this business shit, I got to keep it play. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. So I don't want to just be like. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. you good there? Yeah, right? we good. Right, we right. good. So it's good. It's great. So D, it was the first. This is really the first event that led to like it being a solid business partnership, right? Yeah. So I hadn't been around you and did y'all just throw the, the million dollar, the second million dollar mansion party? We had just through grass season. Well, it was it was grass season? Then the the million dollar mansion party after grass season. Cause I hadn't I hadn't been around for a while. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you and Will was doing back. like a little little pool party get together in these apartments. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It was gathering up for the million dollar mansion. So um, I hit you up. I think about maybe a couple of days before that I was like, yeah, man, you still trying to do the other play we talked about? He's like, man, I ain't know if you want to still do a shit like that. We got to link up or whatever, right? Yeah. So the pool party comes up, and I remember I walk in there and I'm talking to everybody. I'm talking to Will. Everybody, we dapping each other up, and you said, man, I just really want to get some some knowledge from you. Yeah. Right. And I remember it was a girl. <laughs> she was she was a beautiful woman too. Yeah, I want that to exotic. be clear, right? Something exotic. From, she from, she uh, was on your lap, you know. She was dancing all sexually and shit like this, all on you, whatever. Right? You was talking to me. I was turned so, up. In my yeah. mind, I'm like, shit. Whenever, you know, you say shit like that to people, you thinking it's gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna hit like, right, you. Gonna be like, I'm gonna hit you up, bro. <laughs> so you say, all right, let's go. And I, I'm shocked, to be honest, because I'm yeah. sitting there like, it's you mean like, now it's like somebody pulled up on your ass to fight or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. like what's up? What's up? Yeah. What, and what? like, you sitting there like, yeah, pull up on me. you like, he ain't gonna pull up. And then they walk around the corner right there. Yeah, I was already over. What's up? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I was already over. <laughs> what's up? So when you did that, you was like, yeah, let's go right now. I was like, all right. You looked at it, you say, all right, get up. <laughs> and she was shocked. I could tell she had never, ever in her life experienced a motherfucker tell her like, you yeah, know, shit like that. She, yeah. Cause her, you know, uh, I was young get that too. She was, like, she was like, yeah, I was young too. I was like 20, he's like, bro. He's like, like, yeah, get up. Yeah, get up. Cause I need this knowledge. And so what I'm saying is if a motherfucker is that willing to, cause they, cause they fuck with, cause I projected something out there where you was like, I fuck with this so much. This is what I'm willing to do. Yeah. Now yeah, you yeah. see we doing all this shit together. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that's because I projected such a strong energy about the shit that I found somebody who was such a strong business partnership. Exactly. Me and you, we didn't have a whole in well, we know each other for like five years. Yeah. But it feels like we know each other all our lives, all the shit we've been through yeah. in just that short period of time. Hell yeah. So it's like shit crazy. To, to go through all that type of shit and then we just like we sticking this shit out together. You gotta think about how strong the fucking projection had to be. And how strong the values had to be aligned. Yeah. Nah, honestly. But just for for projection's sake, though, like, that mm -hmm. shit is important, though. So, like, it's important for you to, like, you know, just keep it 100 with what you want, too. So that way, you do find the people, like, like he just said. You know what I'm saying? He found somebody that was literally on the same frequency as him. So when it comes to, you know, finding your partner, when it comes to finding your business partner, when it comes to finding your life partner, mm -hmm. when it comes to finding your fucking friends, yep. all of that shit, I, I believe, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's just one of them things that, that, that you got to really key in on, like making sure that you projecting out the energy that you want. Like if you're a very organized person, 
Like his organization rubbed off on me because he's an extremely organized person. You know what I'm saying? But he projected that energy out. And if you if you if you own the same frequency, you end up picking everything up. Like the key thing to do, and like the thing that a lot of people like what we trying to beat into your head is that you have to become a, a specific type of person. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. my favorite part on uh, one of the YouTube episodes is like, man, everybody out here trying to create a new reality, but don't want to change their personality. You know Damn. what I'm saying? And it's so true. You out here trying to beat the system, but it don't work like that. You want a hundred million dollars? You got to turn into a hundred million dollar motherfucker. That's just Damn. what it is. You want Two thousand dollars, you got to turn into a two thousand dollar motherfucker. It's easy. It's you just sit your five dollar ass down, down before I make change. change. I just that, had to say to my <laughs> that ain't had nothing to do with anything. <laughs> just had to had to toss it in there. But seriously though, yeah. it's like we want to cheat the system. We want the Grand Theft Auto cheat codes. R one, R two, L one, R two, left, down, right. It ain't none of that. Yeah. The only cheat code it is honestly is networking to me because. You can get around a hundred million dollar person, and then you can you can embody the characteristics of that person, and it'll leap you up there. Man, and fuck, man, you just you just segue into. I think that's that's perfect. That's perfect. No, I'm saying that because like when I think about it, that it, it it's all kind of tied to the same thing. It's like we want to be in these circles, we want to have this great circle, right? But we are not the person who would be in that circle. Exactly. You want to. You want. You want. You want to be in the like. You want to be at the table with the top dogs, but you haven't analyzed yourself yet. You haven't, and I'm not saying this is my boy D's issue, but yeah. I I feel like I'm talking to somebody who's listening yeah. right now, and I feel like you know who I'm talking to. You know what I'm saying? I feel yeah. like you know exactly what I'm talking yeah, we, about. Yeah, we talking to your ass. We talking to you right now. That's what I'm saying. So what I'm saying listen, is, listen to this. Listen, what I'm saying is, analyze yourself first. Like, <laughs> analyze. analyze yourself <laughs> first. Yeah, you may yeah, analyze. The, analyze, yes. <laughs> And no autocorrect, none of that. That's what. Yeah, it, we don't ever do that. I, I did. I made a mistake about the uh, Joe Rogan buyout last week, or like a week or two ago, or whatever, right? Yeah. And I didn't correct it. I put the real shit up there because I'm because I'm honest. But yeah. it was like he made a hundred million dollars. I think Shopify made a billion dollars on it, right? Mm. But whatever, fuck it. It was wrong when I said it in the show. Maybe be all right. Yeah, you still get the energy. Yeah, <laughs> but analyze yourself. Analyze yourself. You ever heard that um poem? I actually want to read it or whatever, right? Because I gotta get my phone, but it's um it's a poem that's it's like the poem goes something like, I asked God for this and he gave me this. I asked God for this. And I remember when I was starting off uh in business, I remember walking around the college campus before I dropped out and I looked up and I was like, Man, I just wanna have something that I can do that I'm gonna enjoy and I can live my life and be happy with. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like all the hardships I went through with entrepreneurship, business, sleeping on my mom's floor and all that type of stuff. Those things were things that came into my life to transform me into the type of person. Mm -hmm. So when I wanted to be around more positive people, I realized that me and you couldn't have been friends six, seven years ago. Had had you have been a negative person, because I probably would have said some fly shit and you would have been like, man, hell no. Yeah. Or shit. I'm a guy who takes off my shirt on Instagram. If you don't know no better, you don't want to be a, like if you not because if you of a of a specific mindset, because you yeah. got to think about it. If you have a specific mindset, yeah. If you have a, speci a, a specific mindset, you're not gonna want to be around a person like that. Yeah. Just because, like, you may be like, you know, I mean, we always talk about this about the energy, though. Yeah. Right? Like the energy, like if you a person who every time a person sees you, they just get like a vibe. It's like what would make that person want to be around you enough to even find out that you're the type of person they want to fuck with. Exactly. That's what it is. It's like if you too fuck. One of the things I hated about a lot of activists and shit like this and like political people, mm -hmm. those are like so fucking serious. There's no jokes. You can't make a fucking joke about anything, right? Yeah. And the thing is, I love to be organized and get shit done, but I like to fucking play, play around. around. I got a bit of a dark sense of humor. So yeah. what I'm saying is, even that aspect, right? You mm -hmm. got that same type of sense of humor. Yeah. So it's like all those things are things that you like look at and say, boom, what type of energy do I want to put out? And when I'm putting out that type of energy, you're going to have people who don't fuck with you, but the people who do fuck with you are going to be a lot stronger connections and friendships. Yeah. And I think that's the way, biggest way thing more. you got to look at. Mm -hmm. So us, it's crazy to see how our circle is becoming what it's becoming right now. You're yeah. literally watching us go from like, we was all at our mama's house. Well, you was at the other shit, but what I'm saying is at our mama's house as we was scraping by whatever, yeah. right? We struggling or whatever, right? So now it's like, we moving to nicer shit. 
we, we, we becoming like big ass influencers in our city. We're becoming all these people. Right. And the thing is you get to watch this journey. You literally get to watch mama's house, the penthouse. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that came from our circle. Wasn't like we brought somebody in. We tried to bring certain people in. Yeah. yeah. And every time that we haven't started with the base of attraction versus pursuit, mm-hmm. it always turns out bad. Yeah. And that's the thing that I'm trying to get to emphasize. I want to, I actually want to read this poem if I can get it really quickly. Hold it, hold it down real quick. We gonna hold it down. Hold it down. I'm gonna do a quick Google. If I can do it, my bad. I know y'all couldn't hear that shit. I'm gonna see if I can do a quick Google search of this poem, right? Because this, when I heard this shit, I was like, damn, bro. Like, that's powerful, right? I asked. I've actually read it on my channel before. On your YouTube? Yeah. He gave me. Okay. Yeah, I, love I think this is it. Poems. I think this is it. Wait, 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 wait. Is this it? Is it him, Jim? Damn. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll try these, to find it. But, but the biggest thing about whatever um, about this poem was the fact that he, it was like it, they asked for all this stuff. We gotta find it. We got time. They gonna bear with us. Y'all bear with us. We gotta find this good poem yeah, for this, y'all. This, this for you. Is this it? It's for you. We gonna find it right here. Three, two. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. Um, it's different versions of it, but I just let me see. Yeah, this the one. This the one. Here it goes. Right. So it goes, and it, even if you're not a religious person, just the point is, I think when you ask for things in life you get these, you get certain challenges and they make you who you are. So it's like, I asked, I asked for strength and God gave me difficulties, difficulties to make me strong. Yeah. Asked for wisdom and God gave me problems to solve. Yeah. I asked for prosperity and God gave me a brain and brawn to work. I asked for courage and God gave me danger to overcome. Mm-hmm. I asked for love and God gave me troubled people to help. I asked for faith. Yeah. I asked for favors and God gave me opportunities. I received nothing I wanted. But I everything. received everything I needed. Yeah. That's true. That's a mean, that's a mean poem right there. And the thing is, when I tell people all the time, when I, when I see shit like that, the beauty of those things is because that's the way this universe works, right? You want to be in these circles. So now things in your personality are going to start getting exposed. Mm-hmm. You're going to start exposing. People are going to come in your life. Shit's going to get exposed. And it's like, and it's for you, you though. Yeah, exactly. So how you interpret it is really what it comes down to me wanting to be a leader, wanting to run a company, right? I realized I had to be exposed to a lot of people that wasn't for me and stuff like that for me to understand when am I keeping my values and when am I going too far as far as trying to be overbearing and not listening to the people around me. Mm-hmm. But as I speak to people now, I've realized how much of a better, how much better of a leader I've become yeah. because I went through all those experiences. Exactly. I'm way more balanced now. I'm way, I'm able to communicate with people and I'm able to set the boundaries when it's like versus are you fucking up or are Am I just trying to do shit a certain way because it's like, it's not even helpful. It's yeah. I'm just trying to do it this way. Cause yeah. it's like, this is the way I want to do it. You know what I'm saying? So shit like that. Like one big thing I'll give you example, like the way we meet now, I love it now. Right? Like, because we got the laptops, we might meet on the roof. We might meet here. We might, it's not necessary for us to go meet in the boardroom. Yeah. The way our business is set up. Yeah. Right. Or shit. If you was out of town or something, you know what it is. Skype. We started on that Skype game. Yeah. But the thing is, you're asking for these things and I don't know if Donovan, you're asking us the question, but the thing is now it's time to go out there into the world and see like, what are the challenges that are going to turn you to the type of person? Yeah, I can tell you what's going to happen. You want to be in certain circles. You want to have a good group of friends. I read that to myself every morning. I actually have that in my, in my notes. It's, it's, it's reminders. I read every morning. We talked about affirmations on here. Yeah. And one of the affirmations I talk about in, in there, I read it. It's a whole paragraph. I read every day. And in there, it says, I'm a, I, I have a social circle of friends who are all positive, fun, successful people. Mm-hmm. That's one of the lines it says. There's a bunch of other stuff in there. But that's one of the lines in there because what I'm trying to condition myself to be is like, what type of person, what type of, I'm staying with my values. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But in projecting my values, what type of person do I have to become? I think of it like being a history teacher, right? And what I mean by that is you ever had that history teacher was just so much fun that you actually listen to history, <laughs> right? Most people have a history teacher. They remember, like, I usually love my history teacher because they made learning fun. Mm-hmm. So how can I take the vision that I have 
and make it interesting and fun and engaging and attract more people into that. Mm. And I think that's kind of how I look at it, right? I'm not changing myself up. What I'm doing is saying, how do I have this kind of overlap? It's like, think of it like two circles, right? It's like the authentic personality mm -hmm. and the relatability, right? And when they overlap in this middle section, that's the sweet spot, yeah. right? You're not changing yourself, but you're still trying to make a message relatable. You're talking to a little kid, you're going to explain the message different than you explain to a grown ass person. Yeah. And that's kind of how you want to think about your message. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's, I just wanted to read that shit and just kind of get that out because I think looking at our circle right now. Yeah. And why I'm so proud of the circle is because it's the real entrepreneurship shit. Yeah. It's we got, what it, it, we it, got real people who yeah. fucking fought it out to achieve the things they wanted. And it wasn't about us finding this millionaire mentor. It wasn't about any of that shit. It was about us looking at the people around us and saying, hey, we on the same shit. We on the same vibes. How do we build some shit together? Together and fucking catapult this thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. But yeah. I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm just feeling good, man. I'm the sun, <laughs> the sun is, is you just in here. Yeah, I'm I guess, in here. I'm, it's a pleasure to just be on Mama's House of Ten Hours. Yeah. It's your first time listening. Make sure you subscribe on our platform. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I guess the last thing I'll say, um, before we before we take it home, D is also take a leadership role and start creating a community for these people to start coming into. You said earlier, if you build it, you'll come. One big thing is, and I try to do this all the time, is I try to set up an environment that's easy for these people to be around me, right? That's why I love being organized because it's easy to be organized and provide value to people, right? So as a leader, and this doesn't mean that you have to be the leader of everything. It just means that like, creating this community, start organizing things. I used to do massive action talks. Yeah. I used to organize all these events. I used to um, talk about like, just tell people, hey, man, you could do this for your content and help them out with that, whatever, right? What I'm saying is, I was looking at the people that I valued and said, I'm, I'm going I'm to put this value out there for them so they can create it. Like you always talk about, you cut your way to the top, yeah, right? Like looking at the things that you have and saying, what can I do? Let me put this, let me insert this in here. This will be valuable for them. Let's cultivate this relationship and really give a fuck about people. I think that's a big thing too, right? You got to really give a fuck about people. You can't just be looking at a person like a meal ticket or you can't be looking at a person like just what type of shit you can gain from them, clout mm -hmm. you can gain from them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one big thing that you was exceptional at. And I believe myself, when I came to you, you have a large following. I wasn't like, yeah, got them followers. You, them shout -outs. you, you need to post me because it's like, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm looking at the value of the person. And when I feel like we can look at the value of the person and say, this is a real person and this is the value we can provide to each other and it's win-win, then you can start building a circle of people who are in that vibe because anybody who's not win-win, anybody who doesn't understand, anybody who doesn't want to provide value, they'll slowly get weeded out. And the all, only people that will be left are the people who are of that mindset and of that energy that provides you a lot of value. That's facts. He's preaching today, ladies and gentlemen. He's <laughs> so, preaching. With that being said, you want a final thoughts, penthouse? Man, final thoughts on the penthouse projection. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that um, you worked on yourself. So you, uh, you know what I'm saying? When you get to these specific points in life, uh, you pass your test so you can't level up. You may ask, like you said in the poem, you say, I asked to be a, it, it can go for anything. I can just think of recreating that poem. I asked to be a film director. God put me in position to fuck up uh, production. Put, put, yeah, put me in a, a, a crazy production environment where I lost everything, but I learned everything I needed to know. Exactly. And, and, and I learned how to maneuver the camera and stuff like this. I, I met the right people. I, I now have the skill now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So make sure that when you get in these moments, you pass those tests. So the way that you pass these tests is you work on yourself internally. So you make the right decisions in these moments. That's how you level up in your life. You know what I'm saying? It's all about, cause you're gonna, you gonna always get exactly what you're asking for. It's just not gonna come how you think it's gonna come. It's gonna come in its own way, in its own roundabout way. But the, the that's the craziest part about life because it's going to come in a way that you don't recognize what's happening. You're gonna either pass it or fail it. If you fail it, you stay where you are. Most people continue to fail the same test. They want more money, they want more. Some people stop even wanting after a while and then yeah. they plateau for real. Yeah. Because after a while you want, you want, you want, but you can't figure out why it doesn't happen for you. So you just stop wanting and then you plateau. But 
you you know what I mean you, you y'all get where I'm going, but just make sure that you stay making sure that you project your energy out there. The, the energy that you want to come back in, you know what I'm saying? Because that's literally what's gonna make or break your your your, your ability to find your 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 business partner, your your soulmate, all of that. That's what's gonna make or break it. Yeah. I guess my final thoughts from the penthouse are um be the catalyst to creating this network. Uh, when I got up, I started putting the energy out because I was like, I'm just gonna go out there and start doing it. And that's a big thing I've been harping on a lot with people lately, right? I know I talk about a lot of books and I recommend a lot of books. One thing I think is different for me and a lot of people read books is I take a fuck ton of action, right? Yeah. When I see, when I do read a book, I a immediately apply it. I immediately apply it. It's not one book. I don't give a fuck what it is. If it's if it's meditation book, when I read the meditation, I'm meditating the next hour. Yeah. What they said in the book. <laughs> I don't give a damn what it is. I'm taking action. I'm taking a bunch of action because that's how you learn the most. Yeah. The books allow you to speed up your journey because you're not making as many mistakes, but you're still gonna make mistakes. It's unavoidable, right? Yeah. Accept that shit. What I'm saying, just go do it. Yeah. A lot of times we get on this show and it can be real simple for you. How do I go start building a network? Go start trying. Okay. Just try. But Go the biggest outside. thing, we've given you some tips here that's going to make it easier for you so you don't have to spend years being like, why the fuck people don't fuck with me? Exactly. What, what's going on here? Why can't I find these people? I'm telling you. We're telling you exactly what it is. If you go to the Cowboys Ranch right now, you're going to see a, he has a robust set of friends. My friend circle grew dramatically once I started being a better energy. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, that's what I want to tell you. Be the catalyst. Be the starting point. Organized mastermind groups. I remember I used to organize a ma- mastermind group, me, Zoo, and Zena. Yeah. I told them, hey, I'm doing a mastermind group. We, we got together. We talked about each other's business and stuff like that. Start doing stuff like this. Giving these pe- give these people an opportunity to fuck with you. Because yeah. that's what most people are looking at. It's a lot of people who may want to be a part of what you got going right now. But are you giving people the opportunity to come say, hey, this is an opportunity for me to come vibe with you and maybe connect with you? Yeah. And I think that's the thing. Take the leadership role in this situation. Don't be don't be passive. And be sitting at the house putting out Instagram posts and thinking that you're gonna attract these people. Yeah. Go out there and put that message out there. And when you're around people, when you're in front of people, be honest, be authentic, and tell them exactly what you. We all been talking about this lately. Exactly what you about, and exactly. what you need, what you want, and what you want. And then those people give those people because you then you give the people the opportunity to say I fuck with this or I don't. Exactly. But every time a person does fuck with it, they are gonna really fuck with you. Yeah. And that's the power. Of, years uh, of building a network based on attraction versus pursuit with that being said you want to tell me where to find you yes sir hey holla at your boy on uh youtube at cowboys ranch you know what i'm saying i'm growing at youtube that thing bust trying to get to a thousand followers right now currently at the time of this recording so help me go do that if you watch this and i got over a thousand followers just to get a better understanding just go yeah. subscribe anyway you go subscribe yeah. anyway don't worry about don't that just go yeah, I'm trying to get the 10, yeah, 20, 30, you're watching it, get in the, then whatever's 60, next. 70, whatever's next, I'm trying to get to. <laughs> help me, help, help your boy out. If you love this uh, podcast, you know what I'm saying, go, go subscribe to Cowboys. Also, you, if you need a little bit more extra ranch, you know what I'm saying, holler at your boy at, uh, <laughs> on like when, Instagram. Like when they put it on the pizza. Yeah, the like a little bit of extra ranch. Because I, I tell, like I tell my YouTube, uh, my YouTube family, my, my, my ranch members, you know what I'm saying, Hey, I love a little extra rant. You know what I'm saying? So if you need a little extra rant, go to Instagram at countrycowboy.com too, Twitter, countrycowboy.com. All the extra rants is all over the place. And uh, yeah, man. Uh, also, yeah, countrycowboy.com too, in general, if you just need all of the information. We've got the influence out. It's still available for you. Make sure that you go get it. It's the best course on growing your following out there right now, hands down. I don't care what anybody says, okay? Make sure that you tap in with us, grow your following because we have the answer. Yeah, I promise you, the best course, and it's very affordable. I'm I'm t- I'm done using the word cheap because I think y'all are mis- un- misunderstanding the quality that's back there. Very affordable price for you to learn how to grow your following on any social media platform. Only seventeen dollars. Go to cannotbefamous.com or countrycowboy.com to go get you some of that. The price gonna go up. Should be. Yeah. So act now or forever hold your peace. If if only if you know you want to grow your social media. That's only, only. if you want. That's only if. If, if you oh. don't plan on growing your social media whatsoever, you plan on staying. Disregard that. Exactly where you are. If you plan on like you know not growing your following at all, do not go to countrycowboy.com or do not go to cannotbefamous.com. And that's that on that. Princeton Hicks. 
on everything. P-R-I-N-S-T-O-N-H-I-C-K-S. And um, you can go to my YouTube channel. I, I, I'm about to, I'm busting that thing back off right now. Yeah. I'm doing all kinds of I'm about to start. I'm having those people come through and do the interviews, stuff like that. All that, man. Just go check it all out because as I've always said, and you heard it in this episode, I'm helping you create a future where you're in control. You know one of my goals is? What's that? Help create one million seven figure business. That's gonna be lit. And that's one of the reasons I created How to Start a Business in 30 Days. Yeah. Is because um, we talk about it every every episode. You know what it is. You wanna start a business right now, these are the fundamentals. I don't like to preach these fly by night methods where it's like, you go learn this shit six days later, the fucking this thing has changed its algorithm or right. the, you got, the you consumer behavior change. And then all of a sudden your whole project is you don't know what the fuck to do. I'm talking about the strong business fundamentals that no matter what business you create, these are the fundamentals. I don't give a fuck if you creating a, a barbershop, I don't give a damn if you creating a salon, I don't give a damn if you running ads on the shop. <laughs> These are the fucking fundamentals so you can go out there and create your own lifestyle. If you want to be a person who lives on your own terms, if you want to be a person who's able to impact your family, mm-hmm. help your friends, leave a legacy, all that great stuff that you hear the buzzwords talking about, the best way. Forbes raced this, as a matter of fact, one of the best vehicles in order to become successful is entrepreneurship. And I'm teaching you not only the mindset, mm. not just a bunch of mindsets where we sit around and talk about our feelings, yeah. but practical skills that, that you can, you can use right to now. build businesses. I'm even coaching people through it one on one, and the people who've been going through it have been going crazy. They shit been going up so fast because it. I'm just push that out, don't, do that. Out of fat don't out. do that. Don't do that. Siri, is that you? That's something. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, that's how to start business. Thirty days. Go check that out. Go get it right now. Besides that, um, just remember. Build the right people by putting out the real personality. Be authentic. You got anything else to tell them, D, before we get out of here? Shout out to you, motherfucker. Get some shit off Hey Bo Dagger Bump. Snakes in the sky saying that they down the ride. Really, they down for the ride. Really, they down for a piece of my pie. Look in my eyes, you can see that I'm tired. Look in my ties, you can see I got drive. All these emotions, I put them aside. All this potential, I bring it to life. I look them dead in the eyes. Cause I really want it, and I'm really working, and I'm really stressing now because I'm nervous.